A former high-end hotel with a booming nightclub right here in South LA? Yep. And boy, does this structure have a story that you need to know. Special thanks to viewer Benny Espinosa who requested this video in the comment section in one of my previous videos. So let's jump into this recap. Hey guys, and welcome back to the South LA Recap. Don't forget to like and subscribe to learn more about LA and South LA on the regular. We're nearly at 200 subscribers and your clicks, shares, and subs will ensure more videos in the future. Today we're going back in time to look at the Dunbar Hotel, a four-story brick building with decorative windows that, well, almost doesn't fit its historic South Central neighborhood located right on 42nd Place and Central Avenue. If you've watched my earlier videos, my wife and I visited the Dunbar Hotel during our Central Avenue food crawl. So how did this building get here? To know that, we have to understand the creators behind it. And to start, the Dunbar Hotel isn't even the original name of this building. The Dunbar Hotel, originally known as Hotel Somerville, was built by John and Vada Somerville, who were wealthy black residents of LA at the start of the 1910s. John and Vada Somerville were the first and second African-American graduates from the University of Southern California School of Dentistry. As early pioneers in Black Los Angeles, the Somervilles were naturally advocates for the black population in LA and established the Los Angeles chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, in 1913. In early Los Angeles, LA had a small but booming black population, but overcrowding in predominantly black neighborhoods worsened, especially in the historic South Central neighborhood where the majority of black residents lived. Desiring to meet housing demands of LA's black population, the Somervilles built a 26-unit apartment house called Lavada in 1925. In their next venture, they wanted to challenge the status quo by building a first-rate 115-room hotel that could accommodate black people. For the first half of the 20th century, black artists and celebrities were allowed to perform in segregated and whites-only hotels and nightclubs, but Jim Crow laws prevented them from residing at those establishments. Often, some of the greatest black performers were limited to far-off motels and low-performing hotels. The Somervilles wanted better, however. So how did the Somervilles get the capital to build this four-story, high-class, unbelievable hotel right here in South LA? The stock market, of course. Around April of 1928, the Somervilles not only built a hotel, but had lease agreements for shops including a barber, drugstore, and doctor's office, and a lucrative lease with the Fred Harvey Dining System, the nation's most successful dining operation on railroads across the United States. The Somerville Hotel opened for business on June 23, 1928. From the jump, the hotel was visited by a slew of black aristocrats, and the NAACP used the hotel for its headquarters for its 19th national conference and its anniversary party. The monstrous success and high hopes were short-lived. By March 29, 1929, nine months after the hotel opened, John and Vada Somerville lost the property through foreclosure, likely an event triggered by the stock market crash of 1929. Consequently, they were ordered to vacate the managerial role of the property. Lucius Walter Lomax Sr., an astute black businessman, bought the Somerville Hotel for $100,000 in 1930 and renamed the Somerville Hotel the Dunbar Hotel after the black poet Paul Dunbar. While this investment didn't save John and Vada's role in the hotel, it did keep the hotel in black ownership. Under Lomax, the hotel was known for its superb dining room and food, an attractive mezzanine, a pharmacy, and a clothing store. In 1931, the hotel obtained a permit from the police commission to operate a nightclub, which many nearby residents disliked. This booming 1930 success came to an end around 1933 where the property owner faced another round of foreclosures. Lomax sold the property to Father Divine in 1934, a prominent spiritual leader who founded the International Peace Mission Movement, and he likely deserves a video on his own. 
The Dunbar was accordingly converted into hostels for members of the peace mission movement of Father Divine, and the Dunbar Hotel actually no longer operated as a hotel. In May of 1935, the property was leased again and converted back into a hotel. Under new leadership, the hotel resumed its nightlife operation with weekend dances, live music, and an available hall space for rent. The hotel was sold again, but bought this time by James Nelson in 1936, another astute black businessman in South Los Angeles. The hotel resumed its briefly lost role as the spot of interest in South Central quickly becoming the ticket buying hub for events across Los Angeles for black residents. This lively energy lasted until 1952 when Nelson passed. The property went up for sale and in 1958, Celestis King bought the Dunbar Hotel where he later renamed it King's Hotel. The hotel was never the same and King's purchase was not a success. Bernard Johnson bought the Dunbar Hotel in 1968, but the hotel did not have its original pool, flair, or neighborhood demographics for that matter. Eventually, it fell into disrepair and closed doors for good in 1974. The once vibrant scene became yet another urban monolith marred with graffiti and the antithesis of its 1940s heyday. Between 1974 and 1987, the hotel remained vacant. However, in 1976, the Dunbar Hotel entered the National Register of Historic Places. Despite its decline, there was still support to save this historic monument. Johnson, who had not given up on the Dunbar Hotel, founded the nonprofit Dunbar Hotel Cultural and Historical Museum Project. In 1983, the nonprofit group formed a task force to seek funds to refurbish the hotel with a new facade, affordable housing, and a black museum. After advocates fought for revival and held several public fundraisers, the Dunbar Hotel Cultural and Historical Museum Project received a $2.9 million 30-year loan to refurbish the hotel in April of 1987 through LA City's Community Development Department and Community Redevelopment Agency. In 1990, the Dunbar reopened as a 73-unit apartment building for low-income senior citizens with a museum of black history. But that restoration did not last long and fell into disrepair nearly two decades later. Around 2008, LA City foreclosed the property after the owner failed to pay the majority of the $2.9 million loan. In 2011, Dunbar Village LP formed and purchased the Dunbar Hotel and its adjacent buildings. Through a massive $30 million renovation, the Dunbar Village LP converted the low-income senior housing into a mixed-use development called Dunbar Village, which offers affordable and senior housing and a leased commercial floor space. Today, the Dunbar Hotel has a total of 83 units with 41 units allotted for senior housing and 42 units for affordable housing. Downstairs, Delicious at the Dunbar operates the dining space, which I think is reminiscent of the dining room that existed nearly 80 years ago at the hotel. And that is the brief history of the Dunbar Hotel told as briefly as I know how to do it. Thanks everyone for watching this video and I really hope you learned something new today. If you have something to add about the Dunbar Hotel or anything else along the historic corridor of Central Avenue, drop it down in the comments below and I'll catch you around on the recap.